Ah, oh, welcome back my gardening friends to part three of the polytunnel build and I just thought uh, I'd just let you know how, how the uh, field beans are getting on and I'm going to be harvesting all my uh, Jerusalem artichokes uh, at the end of this video those three pots there are the old soil and we've got a little pot at the back there that needs doing and those other bags have got the soil from the Jerusalem artichokes in a dead and mix it with that because we'll have them growing everywhere so if I don't use that soil in the future then I'll have to uh, dispose of it very carefully or make sure I sieve it but that's at the end of the video Had some really hard frosts again so poor old broad beans are looking uh, very sad these are doing well that uh, marie curry sent other than <laughs> oh dear still it's been un an unexceptional uh, winter a lot of the uh, leaves have been scorched but uh, it doesn't seem to have stopped the broccoli forming but you can see here pigeon damage it's uh, outside uh, the net so I bet they've landed on the wood and had a good old peck and then uh, climbed over here so I suppose there'll be uh, poop everywhere as well but it won't be long before we're harvesting some of the um, claret sprouting of broccoli so if you haven't seen the previous videos and you want to watch parts one and parts two that will be in in the cards above or in the description at the end uh, and uh, we we put the curves down we stabilize the soil with uh, a little bit of uh, cement just enough you can still break it up but it just firms it up enough we've popped screws in the bottom to hold the wood up off the curbs so that we don't draw moisture out of the curbs see the moisture there look that's draw the curbs are drawing the moisture out of the ground then the wood will draw it out of the curbs so uh, that's that that that's worked well on my uh, raised beds will I be filling the gaps in probably not that was a question uh, as well um, obviously I'm going to be building the wood chips up but I may be using the mesh and bring it down if the mice rats decide to eat through it then they do but it's not such a problem as long as they don't damage anything here so that's as far as we got in part two uh, and now we are at uh, part three so I've used a pallet over here and over there with a couple of pieces of wood screwed those together give them uh, the strength and uh, I use those bits of wood on here to the bed to slide the poly I did this on my own slid the poly tunnel over and we've done a little bit of a uh, framework here just so it sits on and we've got a little bit of movement and so this doesn't topple off that way we've just got a couple of supporting bars in so I'll put the uprights in we've got some cross pieces and uh, we've got some polycarbonate in there from that um, now we've got a lot of movement that way because we still haven't done nothing here but I've got no movement going that way one because that is square so if every if it fits nice and tight it, it can't go we've just tidied it up with that Let's see my woodworking skills um, some of the joints are okay some are not and uh, we're not taking that out at the moment and I might not even take it out I'm not going to be putting the wheelbarrow in there because anything I need to take in and out I can carry so that's tidied that up with the bits of timber and then if you remember we bought an 8 before poly sheet and I got the company to square them off for me and then we either cut them like that for big ones I like that for a smaller one or like that for even smaller for the doors etc now that will stop it from moving that way that is the westerly wind that we get all the issues with so I'm not saying it's not going to blow away but it shouldn't collapse now 
was talking about using these rebars to hold it down and uh, CB greenhouse and garden said why not drill the holes through there but I tried pushing that in and it went right in so it's not going to help they're not long enough so I'm going to have to use wooden stakes and as they rot I'll replace them I've got areas there and there and uh, we've got areas along here that we can uh, put them through and there's nothing to stop me putting a bit of scrap wood across these which is probably the, the better idea but that's not going to stop the mice coming in from there so let's not try and stop them we'll let them come in but if there's nothing for them to eat if we put everything out of reach that uh, should stop them so we've had some bits of timber that we was going to use for the uh, the uh, staging the benches but i ended up uh, using them to hold the polycarbonate in so that was a freebie obviously all the new timbers cost me money so i'm trying to reuse repurpose uh, or what i can um, i've put the two uprights in i've had to join that up with that so that we can get some support there because i'm drilling screwing straight onto the flat so you just got to have a little think of um, how you're going to make it nice and solid and then the doors can be hung uh, on here i'll probably have double doors probably a little bit wide for a single door for, for opening up but we will see uh, we'll see what uh, comes and realistically this end uh, is exactly uh, the same bar from having a bigger sheet and having a center post and I will keep adding these supports as and when everything's done so the next stage will be uh, to put a middle post in on the full length and then I can sit the 3b3 running across here to roughly the center and then run this across another question somebody or suggestion somebody said uses clamps but uh, David I've already got holes all along here uh, to fasten them in and I think the amount of holes that are, are on here uh, with a washer I think uh, this will uh, hold up nicely uh, I'm hoping it'll be dry enough at some stage to uh, get this dried out and uh, get a little bit of paint on it I'm sure it'll last uh, my lifetime out or before the next high winds and it disappears over to another plot when I ordered this wood I thought oh I've got plenty but you soon start to get down it so I had all these panels for free but I've already used three already so there's enough there for two windows or smaller windows but that that's free but when you have to start buying more wood then it, it can start to uh, 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 the, the money starts to escalate and uh, we we can't all afford uh, to do this um, you're not very often going to get a 6b3 polytunnel uh, this high um, I'll just get into position you know, for the price uh, and to have exactly what you want now if you remember this is right at the bottom and uh, now I can this, the, the camera's now at head height so you can see now I can walk down there uh, quite easily <clears throat> the wood that's on the top here will be replicated along there now that is now uh, waist high to me so the framework the benches whatever you want to call them they'll just uh, fold down in the summer so the tomatoes can grow or whatever I've got and then in the winter that we can fold them back up uh, or remove them but it's better to fold down because we've not always got lots of space uh, on our growing spaces and uh, I was talking about having uh, the rainwater wick guttering system along here but when you start building you realize that you haven't got all that much room so because of the space and the room I've got uh, I am going to be building uh, a raised bed in here eventually to bring the level up so I haven't got to bend down so much and then I can then add the rainwater guttering at a higher level and then I can plant 
either side it or in it and still have a little walkway things change as you go along but uh, at the moment how this has come together uh, i'm quite pleased and uh, the framework will be molded into that once we bring the polytunnel up closer create a door an opening window to let the heat out from the top and don't forget we don't want to seal it up completely we want plenty of ventilation or our poor plants will uh, suffer either from uh, damp and damping off etc heat so good ventilation and if we have to leave these open we'll leave them open uh, if hot air rises we need cold air to come in um, to help our plants uh, survive those really hot days but over the winter i could just block them off so that uh, it's a, a wee bit warmer so i hope you've enjoyed that if you're going to stay with me i'm going to re reel my jerusalem artichokes and save some uh, for uh, seed for next year no doubt they've started to grow just a quick add on to this video you may have seen another video that i've done a quick short uh, on tantalized timber i mentioned in the last video oh firewood well realistically this is uh, treated with chemicals and everything else and you may be able to see there the green of um, the treatment it does penetrate inside the wood and you can see how far that's uh, that's gone in and uh, if you burn that especially on an open fire in the house or in a uh, confined space uh, over a long period of time it could affect your health so my advice is please do not burn tantalized or treated timber i knew about the concerns of in the chimney blocking the chimney up but not uh, took into account what it could be doing to me so that's a big thank you uh, to chris at uh, exploring nature together why not check her channel out she's not on at the moment but uh, leave a message on her last video and say i said hello that's chris at exploring nature together if you're going to grow Jerusalem artichokes in buckets, just one tuber and possibly buckets that you can maybe throw away afterwards because those buckets are really bellow, uh, bellowed out and uh, as the plastic gets older it will split but uh, this works for me, one tuber per bucket so we've got uh, four containers, let's see what we get from four tubers I'm going to put those Jerusalem artichokes back in the bucket and then show you the soil that's in the barrow. Nearly full. So we've got a little bit of soil left in the wheelbarrow. We've got all those roots which would have been above ground. They're the ones that I've just showed you. There's the soil that I've just took out the barrow. There's the soil from that one. And there's the uh, soil from that one and there's the uh, one from the uh, little bucket which we probably wouldn't th these are far too full i'll fill these right up i wouldn't have filled those up when um but how that'd be a good challenge wouldn't it put all that back into there and uh, if you can see the shape of that that obviously is took the pressures off that's what the uh, the buckets uh, normally look like what would happen if they escaped into your garden and took over so always be cautious very very cautious get these washed and get them weighed right, i'm just going to uh, tear that off let me get that sorted I 
tractor. These are the seed. I'll be saving. One five seven one. And there we'll. Uh, this one's uh, quite a good looking one. We'll, uh, we'll get them all on. Ten point six three four. Ten point six three four. And we've got um, our last two Swedes. Uh, those carrots are actually out of the uh, same place where I got the stumpy ones from, so uh, it's just potluck. And these are the potatoes out of the permanent bed. After all that weather, they're still uh, looking good. And that's 3.265. We're gonna call that uh, 3.1 because of the weight of the basket. Now, these giant onions on the left, yeah, they might not be giants, but bar gum, they've been good eating and they've kept well. Uh, the uh, red, uh, no, I think they're the Sabrune or are they the Red Florence? Don't know, but whichever one this one is, uh, it could be the Sabrune. They are storing really well. Uh, they're not going to seed like these are, but uh, I shall definitely be growing uh, more of the Sabrune. And that's uh, my weight so far for hashtag Team Down Under. Time for a brew. It's a wonder it ain't me melted the kettle. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that, uh, my friends. <coughs> just doing little and often on the polytunnel uh, today uh, is Saturday as you can see with the dates and uh, I've been doing little bits I'm not going to completely bore you to death with showing you how I do stuff too much I think you can get the idea but Jerusalem artichokes wow how productive are they just can't eat them quick enough though still got some in the fridge but I've got to get them out, out because uh, they're started to root once they start to root they lose the goodness because they're using all the energy uh, to grow again so I think I've timed it just right so thank you to Chris for uh, dropping me a line about the, uh, the treated timber uh, I can always burn that on my big brazier when I uh, burn some stuff um, over next uh, next uh, winter just store it away not going to waste it but it needs to be burnt out in the open out of the way happy gardening to you all till next time my friends ta for now The Robin has been down to see me this morning. He was having a little poke around in them tubs. Take care, my friends.